See, Numbers 9 and 15 is where we're going to find ourselves at today. What I love about this scripture in Numbers 9, it's a great example of this is the Israelites being led out into the wilderness, sitting on the brinks and understanding that there's a promise ahead, but they need direction, they need correction, they need guidance, they need a sign to follow God. Maybe you're in a season like the Israelites right now, where you feel as though that you stepped into the unknown and you feel as though that you stepped into a, a dark path and, and here's, what, here's what God did for them and it's what I believe what God is doing for you. He's turning on the light. He's turning on the light and God is saying, trust me. Cloud by day, fire by night, it's all around me. Even in the dock, it, it reads in verse 15, family, it says, on the day the tabernacle was set up. Mm. Every situation is a setup for God if you allow God into it. The tabernacle, God's presence is inside the tabernacle. Every time they set up the tabernacle, God's presence inside the tabernacle, God's presence hover over the tabernacle. Every situation is a setup if you allow God into it. The cloud covered the tabernacle the tent of the testimony and it, and it appeared like fire above the tabernacle from evening until morning. It remained that way continuously. The cloud would cover it, appearing like fire at night. When the cloud was lifted up above the tent, the Israelites would set out at the place where the cloud stopped. There the Israelites camped. Mm. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out in the Lord's command, they camped. As long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle, they camped. 19, even, even when the cloud stayed over the tabernacle, many days the Israelites carried out the Lord's requirement, hear that family, and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud remained over the tabernacle for only a few days, they were camp at the Lord's command and set out at the Lord's command. God is speaking to somebody right now. Sometimes the cloud remained only from evening until morning. When the cloud lifted in the morning, they set out. Or if it remained a day and a night, they moved out when the cloud lifted. Verse 22, here we go. Whether it was two days, a month, or longer, I, I mean, whether it was two days, a month, or, or longer, whether day or night, whether good or bad, whether sunshine or, or rain, whether day or night, here's what I'm saying, regardless of what the climate looked like, his presence was still there. God is right there to guide you. We'll close it out here. The Israelites camped and did not set out as long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle. But when it was lifted, they set out. They camped at the Lord's command. And they set out at the Lord's command. Woo. They carry out the Lord's requirement according to his command through Moses. Even in the darkness, God's light was with them. Family, I want to preach for our remaining time today, this morning. I want to preach a message from the bottom of my heart. God's with you in the dark. Say that to yourself. God's with you in the dark. Say it again, family. Come on. God's with you in the dark. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you in this space. 
We're so gracious for the Holy Spirit that's settling in right now. Speak to us even right now. Begin to settle in our minds and settle in our hearts. And, and even in that dark area, we ask that the light be turned on. We ask that you speak a word that increases our faith to know and to understand that you're always around us. We honor you. We love you. It is in Jesus' name. Come on, family. Somebody shout amen. 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 You can go ahead and have your seats. Amen. Can we put our hands together for our worship team? Amen. 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 Can we put our hands together? Come on, if you look around throughout the entire house, even in here and outside, I'll see students, our middle and high school, come on. They are serving in the house today. Come on. Come on. They are serving in the house today, families. Talking about God's with you in the dark. See, family, I, even though how so familiar I am with my own house, anybody in here love a good old midnight snack? Come on, somebody. Come on, there we go. Come on. <laughs> but even though how familiar I am, Pastor Elaine, of my home, come on, this is my home. I'm the father and the husband of my familiar home. When I wake up at midnight, I love to get my good old oatmeal cream pie. Come on, Julius, come on. I'm almost 40, it's catching up. I don't know, I might need to change my diet, but, but what, even though how familiar I am, I'm learning that just because I know my home, I still need to turn on the light to get to the kitchen. Because I get so frustrated from bumping into furniture and stepping on Princeton toys that he, that he forgot to clean up the, before going to bed. I find myself bumping into stuff because I allow my ego of familiarity to move me away from a place of turning on the very source that I need in my life. I have a light switch. I have multiple. Come on, I got the good stuff. I got, I got what is it, the LED and supposed to save me five nickels on throughout the year. I, I got the good stuff and I still don't use it at midnight because I believe I know where I'm going and I know how to get there. See, we can be just like me at midnight going to get that good old oatmeal cream pie. And now instead of bumping or stepping on Princeton toys, there are things that's bumping and stepping on in your life right now. Come on, I want to preach to you on a Wednesday where you're frustrated at right now that you've been bumping into stuff because you refuse to turn the light on. That you find yourself, oh, I want to preach to the right church today. You find yourself saying some spicy words because you don't understand why this keeps happening to me and only me. And why is this? I'm stepping on this. And here's what God has been whispering to. Anthony, are you turning on the light? See, see, we can, we can see certain things coming our way if we allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us and guide us with obedience to the very thing that he's calling us to do. And here's what God is saying. In this season, Anthony, in this season, Celebration Church, we have got to make sure that we are leaning in on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here to help you. The Holy Spirit is here to guide you. The Holy Spirit is not something that's weird. Maybe you have been taught that, been raised in a, as a young child. The, there's nothing weird about the Holy Spirit. Here's the beautiful thing about the Holy Spirit is that God sent the Holy Spirit, and he's a God. He's third person. He's in the Trinity, and he is here to guide you in the fullness of who he is. We have a source, but do we use the very source that God has given us? So now we're frustrated because there, there are certain things that we're, that we're stepping on and there are certain things that we're, 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 that we're going on in our life. And here's what God told me to tell you. Maybe it's time to turn on a light in, in, in certain relationships in our life. That you can find yourself that you're frustrated with certain relationships. Oh, I, I, I want to go a little bit deeper for the rest. Maybe your marriage is going through. Here's what, here's what God is saying. Anthony, maybe your marriages can have a little bit of steps and you're stepping on this and, and you're getting in arguments on this. Come on, can we be true this morning? And God is saying, Anthony, are you turning in on the light in your marriage? Are you and your wife praying together? Come on, somebody. 
It's you and your wife having in-home devotion because there's some stuff that you've been stepping on that you shouldn't be stepping on. If you would just turn on the light, maybe your job is a little bit rocky and you, you've been blaming some stuff on your boss and you've been blaming some stuff on, on your coworkers and maybe you got some valid reasons, but God is saying, I am the Holy Spirit. I, I can show you what's getting ready to come up if you would just turn on the light. See, today I want to preach a message, family, that I want to preach a message. Maybe you're in this season right now where God is saying, you're walking in the dark, but if you turn on the light, I'll show you the direction where I'm getting ready to take you. See, sometimes we're waiting for God to show us the entire staircase, that we're waiting for God to show us the whole, each and every step, but his word doesn't say that, family. His word says that he will light your path. That means that where you're getting ready to step, he will bring a light right there. And maybe you're staying stuck because you're afraid that where you're getting ready to step, you don't know where you're going. But I'm here to tell you today, my friend, I'm here to tell you today, my sister, if you step with God, God would always lead you to the promise and the destiny of where he's getting ready to take you. God is here to guide you. But God, see, see, you have to ask the question though, family. And here's the question that I've been asking myself all week. And I want to, I want to ask you today, am I following my desires or am I following the Holy Spirit? Because if I continue to follow my desires, and, and it, this is funny because I was, I'm being very transparent this morning because I, I was in a meeting a couple of weeks ago, you know, around other pastors, you know, you know, a pastor's meeting, come on, Pastor Elaine, it's a board meeting. And, and, and I didn't, I, I remained very quiet, but someone, someone said, follow your passion. I said, Ooh, I don't know about that. I don't, I don't know about that because sometimes my passion is not actually what God is speaking. Because sometimes my, my passion can easily be tied up with my preference. See, see, my passion can, can easily be what I want and, and, and what I think. But if I, if I follow the Holy Spirit, because if I wait, if I wake up today and I, and I don't feel like preaching and I just don't show up today, is my passion in line or am I following the Holy Spirit? Because here's what I want to hear. Here's what I'm saying right now, because your passion can easily lead you away to whatever everything that God is calling you to do. Don't, see, your, our passions can easily get mixed up with our feelings. See, there's some, there's some things that God is calling you to do that your feelings don't want to do. Oh, yes, come on. I, I'm preaching right there today. Just come on. I, I want to lean in that, that space right there where you're at because there will be some days on a Tuesday where your passion is not where it needs to be. But thank God that our faith has nothing to do with our feelings. Thank God our faith is not moved by our feelings. Thank God that our faith is moved by our obedience. And if God has said a word, I don't have to wait for my passion to get in line of what God is speaking over my life. Once God speaks it, he's just waiting for me to be obedient. And here's what God is saying right now. Turn on the lights. Not when you feel like it, but because God said it. Mm. Turn on the light. Say this with me. The Holy Spirit is my help. I'll say it again. The Holy Spirit is my help. See, see, maybe you, you're asking the question today, and here's what you have to, got, we have to learn to do more. We have to learn the more to ask for help. I know it sounds very simple. I know it sounds very ele elementary, but God is saying, ask the Holy Spirit for help. We talk, and, here, and when I say we, I'm including myself in it. We can easily talk to people more about our situations than we talk to God about our situations. Why is sometimes that God is not our first resort of what we're going through? Why is God, is God is waiting on the sideline and he's saying, Anthony, I'm, I'm the coach and I'm, I'm just, I can fix the issue and I, I can turn on the light, but we can run to other people first before we run to God. 
God becomes our third and fourth, fifth option. God is on. The Holy Spirit is on, on the bench. He's waiting to get into the game. And God is saying, if you would just cry out to me the same way that you cry out to people, the same way that you cry out to your spouse, God is saying, the Holy Spirit is saying, cry out to me the same way. Because I'm waiting to help you. I'm, I'm waiting to turn on the light. See, maybe you got a business decision coming up. God said, ask me for help. Maybe, maybe you're asking certain questions right now. Should I stay in this relationship? And God is saying, ask me for help. Not, not just ask your homegirl. Come on, somebody. But, but actually ask me. God is saying, ask me and I'll lead you. Because here's the beautiful thing about God's word. And here's what I get asked a, a, a question a lot about from being a pastor. How do I know if I'm in the will of God? And here's my question. Here's my response. Are you ready? The Bible. But, here, but, but here's what I mean by that. Because I, I love the word of God. I really do. I, I love it with all my heart. And the word of God will always give you the general will of God for your life. So that's why we read his word. It, it gives us the, 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 the general will of which direction I should go in. But maybe you're single in here. And maybe you're, maybe you have a desire to be Murray. Please tell me in the Bible where God is saying Murray, that, that gentleman over there. See, here's the beautiful thing about where God doesn't just leave us there, but the more we read his word, we begin to hear his voice. The more we begin into his word, he begins to speak. And the more we begin to hear his word and get into his word, that person that's speaking is called the Holy Spirit. And if you need some specific answers to your questions, it's not just going to come from the word. The word is going to lead you to his Holy Spirit. They work together. Come on, somebody. Who am I preaching here today? If you are looking for some specificality, the Holy Spirit can lead you and guide you in all truth. They go hand in hand. So we can, we can, we can read his word, but are we talking to the Holy Spirit? We're talking to the Holy Spirit, but are we reading his word? They can't go. They go together. You got to talk to one. You got to talk to both. They, 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 they go together because he's here to lead you in all truth. Maybe you got a financial decision coming up. If you're like me, here's another transparent. I remember when I first got, got saved back at 21 and I needed a job. You know what book of the Bible I read, Elaine? Job. You talking about unchurched in here. Didn't grow up in the house of the Lord. I read that entire book, Pastor Elaine, and it did not increase my resume. I felt bad for Job. I thought this guy don't eat out. He felt bad. But here's what, here's what I'm, I'm adding humor to it. But here's in, on, in on honesty. When we lean into his word, he will light your path. So, so as I said it before, I, I wish I can give a better illustration because here's what God as a pastor, here's what God has been has been saying to me all this week is that there's way too many of us that are stuck in a season because we're afraid to take a step. That we're, we're, that we're, so now we're we're paralyzed in our in our faith walk. And we're not walking with God because we're we're scared to take the step. We're scared to take the leap. We're scared, so we, we're playing it safe. And I, I preached this word a couple weeks ago. It is time to pray some scary prayers. It is time to get off the edge, get off the, the, the shore with God and jump out into the deep and trust that the Holy Spirit is guiding you because he's his. Let us not continue. Hear this word from God. Let us not continue to just eat crumbs when God is looking to give you the entree. God is look, God has so much more and we have to make sure that we're turning on the light. Here's why I say that and I'm getting ready. I'm going to give you three quick points and we're going to be out of here and I can get you to brunch. I promise, I promise, I promise. Write this down. Number one, God still speaks in the dark. 
God still speaks in the dark. Psalms 37 verse 23 says it this way. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall for the Lord upholds him with his hand. God is holding your hand in this season. Despite how dark that area may be, God is holding your hand in this season. You may have wobbly, like that baby. I remember I got three sons. You know, when they first start walking, they're play, they going to have this on camera. I'm just going to look so funny. But I remember when all three of my sons first started walking. And as a father, I used to call them out. Come on. I got you. I, I won't let you fall. And from when they started walking, how do those babies start walking? They, they legs start going like this and they, they try, that's you in the faith right now. And maybe you're wobbling and maybe you're stumbling, but guess what? You're moving. Guess what? You're taking another step. Guess what? You showed up another Sunday. Come on, guess what? You're staying in your word. You may be stumbling and you may have fallen this week, but your father is still calling you. Your father is still there saying, I got you. I know your marriage is going through some stuff, but I got you. Come on. I know you may, you may be scared. You think you might going to lose that job and your finances. Not looking to. Guess what? Keep stepping with me. I got you. Keep walking with me. Come on. If you'll just trust me down to the last penny, I, I got you. I won't let you go. I trust me. I'm right here in the dark with you. I'm walking with you. I'm calling you out. God is calling you even in the dark. See, that's what you got to encourage yourself during the week. When you're by yourself, when Pastor Marquise and the team is not with you, you have got to learn and say, you know what, God, you're still speaking in this dark. You're still talking in this dark. You know what, enemy? I know you're whispering, but God is still speaking to me. God said that his hand will uphold me. He will walk with me. That's the promise. And my second point is this, family. If you're searching for hope, start looking in the right places. Where have you been searching for hope at? Where do you run to where you're looking for hope? What's your default in life when you're in a hopeless situation? What's the first thing that comes to your mind? Who's the first person that pops in your head? Who gets the first phone call when you're in a hopeless situation? See, this is what we're talking about, turning on the light. And here's how sometimes, please hear my heart on today, never try to fix a dark place or a dark solution. or a, Let me say that again. Never try to fix a dark problem with a dark solution. That's it. Never try to fix a dark problem with a dark solution. The only solution that has light has to come from the word of God. Allow the Holy Spirit to speak into that dark problem. Allow God to speak into that problem. Because here's what it says in Galatians 5 and 25. Hear my heart today, family. It says, since we live by the spirit, let us keep in step with the spirit. We are being led by the Spirit. So, so, so when we're being led by the Spirit, we, we, we talked about this last week. When we're, if you're looking for love, so love. If you're looking for peace, so peace. If you're, if you're, you're, if you're looking for some patience, so patience. Because when we stand on the principles that's found in the Word of God, we will always reap what we sow. So if you're in a season right now, if you're looking for more love, hear my heart, so love. You keep sowing love even on your job. Come on, you keep sowing love. If you're looking for gentleness, you keep sowing the very thing that you're looking for. If we stand firm to the principle, and here's what Galatians, we follow the spirit and step and step, and the spirit will always lead you in the right direction. It will all, it never fails that he's always leading you to the breakthrough that's in your life. Do not grow weary because you don't see the results that you may need to see in this season. But I'm here to tell you and I'm here to pray over you that you're walking in the right direction if you're walking with God. You may be lonely right now, keep walking with God. He'll lead you to a group. 
Come on, here lead you to an online group, right hand celebration, where, where, where your community is, where, where your breakthrough is, where of everything that you may be struggling in. We got some phenomenal women's group. I'm telling you, get connected. You, you can find your breakthrough and your testimony. Come on, men. We got some, we got some great men's community in here. And maybe you're wearing a lot of hats of being a man and being a husband and being a father and, and on your job, you're doing this. And now you need to get around some men that have some drop spots and just let some stuff go so that men, other men can speak into your life because when you walk with the spirit, it will lead you to the spirit. It will lead you to community where you're getting ready to get your breakthrough. When God says that you are not in this alone, he is saying by my spirit, I'm going to lead you in the right direction. By my spirit, I'm always going to cover you. By, by my spirit, I'm going to give you the breakthrough. Here's what the enemy will love to whisper to you, that you're in this by yourself. But God speaks in the dark. My last point is this, family. Even if it's dark, you can still get up. Even if it's dark, you can still get up. What's a dark place in your life right now? What, 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 what's the area in your life right now where you're, you're saying, you know what, God? Breathe on it. Light up the, just, just, just light it up right now because despite it being midnight, your breakthrough is still here. You don't have to wait till the light turns on to get up. You don't have to wait. I, what I love about it, even in Acts, and I'm getting ready to close out Acts 16, it says about midnight, Paul and Silas, come on somebody. About midnight, Paul and Silas was praying, and what? They were singing hymns, and they were, they were singing some, some worship songs like, like we're singing right now, and, and the other prisoners were listening to them, and guess what? Suddenly, come on. Suddenly, come on. Not when, not when the sun came up. Come on, somebody. But, but, but suddenly, where, where it was still 12.01 a.m. by themselves, it, it was a suddenly move of God. And here's what I'm saying to you, and, and here's what God has been saying to me. You don't have to wait till it's daybreak for you to get your breakthrough. That God is breaking through right now. That I know that it's dark. I know that it's, it's the darkest time of your season right now. It's a dark time in that Pacific area, but you don't have to wait till it's light to receive that breakthrough. That he's breaking through right now. John 20, 21, and here's what, here's what God whispered to me today. And I said, God, that's, that's for Easter time. That's an Easter message, Holy Spirit. He said, no, nah, that's, that's my message right now. He said, early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, come on, early on the first way, this is, this is where Jesus came out of the tomb. Come on, somebody. Early on the first day of the week, early on the first day of the week, it was still dark. Jesus got up. Jesus got up. What is God whispering to you right now? Maybe, maybe you're saying, you know what, when... When that connection happened, that's when I can get up. When, when I run into the right person, that's when I can get up. When, when, when my marriage is kind of get over this, that's when we can get up. And, and here's what God is saying. Here's what God's been whispering to me all week. Anthony, don't wait for the light to turn on. Get up right now. Get up right now. Come on, somebody stand to your feet. Come on, come on, just stand to your feet. Get up right now. And God is saying, just begin to stretch your hands and begin to pray because God is saying, it is time to get up. It's time to get up. While it was still dark, it's time to get up. I want to close with this, family. I want to close with this in Philippians chapter 4. Watch this, family. It says, I know what it's to be in need, and I know what it's to have plenty. Mm. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all this through him who gives me strength. 
Paul said, I learned the secret. I learned the secret on how to be strong. I learned the secret on how not to give up. I, I learned the secret. I, I just wonder, do you know what the secret is today? Because the secret is always found in his word. That his, that his word says that he will never leave you or forsake you. That's, that's the secret. That, that his word said that he will always be with you. That's, that, that's the secret that his word said that he will hold your, oh, that, that's the secret. So even right now in the midst of that dark place, God is saying the secret is I'm with you. That you can do all things through Christ. Come on, somebody. Through, through Christ who is strengthening you. Through, through Christ who is giving you the wisdom. It's, it's through Christ who is going to pay that bill. It's, it's through Christ who's going to make the connection. It is, it is through Christ. That's the secret for your life. So when you share your testimony and people say, how are you still standing? You don't look at yourself. Come on, somebody. We, we, we're going we're gonna to move from this place, but maybe your neighbor needs this. Maybe, maybe somebody online needs this because, because when people look at your story and you begin to share your story and they begin to say, how are you still standing? How are you guys still married? How your relationship, your murder, I mean, how's your family still intact? How you still have this business? How, how's this church still around? And all we can say is, but the glory of God. Because we bumped into the secret. Because we bumped into the one. We bumped into the one that, that kept calling us, that raised us from the darkness, that raised us from the grave, and he spoke light into us. He turned on the light. He began to move in our life. It was Jesus that did it. So here's what we do. We go turn on the light for others. We go, we, we, another Murray couple in here, we go to another Murray couple, and we turn on the light for another single person in here and maybe that single person is struggling here's what you do you go turn on the lights for that business that's that's struggling and and they don't maybe this is the end of the season this is the last fiscal year and they don't they don't know how they're going to turn the page but your business is successful here's what you do you go turn on the light like the path for somebody else so that they can keep walking, so that they can keep believing, so that they can keep striving, so that they can know that Jesus is with them. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you. We honor you for this word today. That you are here. You're here with us. That you're speaking to us in the dark. That you're calling us up. That we're following your, we're following your spirit. So lead us, guide us into all truth. Maybe there's someone in here today, Father, that they're struggling right now. They don't know or even see their next step. It's hard. It's tough. Feel like giving up. So God, we're as a community. We're praying for them even right now. We're praying that you will shower them with love. We're praying that you will shower them with grace. We're praying that you will meet them in their bedroom at, at midnight, Lord God, and you will release a word to them to wake them up out of their sleep and let them know, don't give up, my sister. Don't give up, my brother. God is here to lead you. He's speaking to you in the dark. Get up out of that dark place. Touch him, Jesus. Amen. 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 Hey, listen up. Next weekend, uh, next Sunday is Partnership Sunday. All right? Just remember that. Like Pastor said, we have had the opportunity to kind of bump into people, right? And turn the light on for people and partner with people here in our community. So please be here next week. You'll be able to hear some of their stories. Um, uh, we've been charged and challenged to help those in our community. And next week, we'll showcase some of the great things that your cheerful giving 
has uh, been able to help and benefit in the community. Partnership Sunday, next Sunday is the 16th, I think, October 16th. Please be here and see some of the amazing stories happening um, locally and nationwide. Going to bed? Guess what, church? God loves us so much that he blessed us with a care team, right? With people who care enough, right? We have this awesome pastoral team and uh, incredibly talented caregivers to come alongside us as individuals, as families, as couples. Life happens at every stage and season. And our church and community is blessed to have its very own team to come in in the midst of those seasons and provide the resources that are needed to help us be successful and to come through. He said, we come through the fire and won't even smell like smoke. And so there's a, a care team station out front. We would love for you to come and meet everyone that's a part of the care team. All right, good people, let's go home, please. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for your continued blessing. We just ask that you are able to get everybody home and safe and let them have a blessed week. Lord, let somebody in here be a light, Father, for somebody else. Let somebody in here um, be a testimony to someone else. We pray for our pastors, Lord, and their commitment to our church. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. See you all next week.